Welcome to the Crazy Hat Chemist. So here we go. We're making some pasta sauce instead of chemistry problems. So this is really exciting. So um, you first have to start off with the first set of things. And number one is a crazy hat. And this is actually one of the ingredients that's normally in pasta, but pasta sauce. But today it will not be in pasta sauce today. And that is garlic. Okay, so one of the first things you need to do is get an apron, and this is from Luca, one of my uh, family members uh, came from this town, so that's super exciting for me. This is actually my wife's pasta sauce from Spain, so it's very critical that you follow these specific steps. So, the first thing that we need to do is figure out what are the ingredients that are necessary for making the world's best pasta sauce, according to my wife. So, here we go. So, uh, number one, you need to start off with tomatoes. And we're going to start off with a box of tomatoes here. And these are organic tomatoes, hand-picked. And uh, these come from Mr. Actually, Senor Toledo's farm. So um, organic, uh, homegrown tomatoes from Senor Toledo. And these, this is really one of the most important things is that you have these organic tomatoes. You can see here that there's a variety of different kinds of tomatoes, not Roma tomatoes. That is very important. But you do have uh, red ones and green ones and yellow ones, and it's a whole mixture. So it really doesn't matter what you pick, but pick them all. Then um, for this box of tomatoes, it's going to require two organic red onions. Okay, so we're going to need two organic red onions. Different than garlic, but two organic red onions. Okay, um, you are going to need some olive oil. So, some olive oil, and of course, since my wife is from Spain, you need to pick olive oil from Spain. Hence, the olive oil. Okay, then you're going to need some salt. And uh, our favorite salt is right here. As you can see, that's called omnivore salt, and it has salt and other things inside of it to give it some nice flavor. So, this is excellent. Okay. Um, the other ingredient is sugar, just sugar, just like that, okay? And I'm going to tell you the amounts of each of these here in just a moment here. We have a whole entire box of tomatoes. We have two red onions. We're going to bring uh, probably about a small palmful of sugar and about three times as much salt. And that's all that's necessary for the ingredients of this wonderful homemade pasta sauce. Um, you do need some other, uh, so those are the ingredients, and now let's get into what you need as far as equipment, okay? So um, you are going to need a cutting board, any cutting board will do. You're going to need a knife, very sharp knife for cutting those tomatoes and the onions. You're going to need a large glass bowl, okay? Um, a large spoon, a rubber spatula, a hand blender, um, and a pasta puree, I think this is called. Um, you could probably get one of these online. Uh, we get these in Spain, and effectively what it does is it separates the um, tomatoes and other ingredients. Um, and holds back the seeds and the tomato skin. So you don't want the seeds of the tomatoes and the tomato skin in your final product. So um, I'll show you how this works later on, but you're gonna place the tomato sauce in here and then move this like this, and then the seeds and the skin will be held back in this um, instrument, and then the tomato sauce will just come right through there. Okay, like that. So you're gonna need that. Um, you're also going to need a large pot. Because, well, we have a lot of tomatoes, so we got to have a large pot for all our tomatoes. And uh, I just have one jar as an example here, but you're going to need a lot of jars like this so that you can put the tomato sauce in the jar, because we're making so much tomato sauce, 
that we're gonna freeze some of this for later on use. And that way, you can have enough tomato sauce in your freezer all year long, and you'll never have to go to the store because you won't want to after tasting this tomato sauce anyways, because it's that good. All right, so uh, let's get started. One of the first things we need to do here is uh, wash the tomatoes. So we're gonna wash the tomatoes, and then we're going to cut them up and put them in the pot. So. We'll get all that set up right over here. I'm going to put some of these other things off to the side since we're not going to need these right away so you can kind of see what's going on. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these tomatoes. I have a, a bucket inside the sink uh, to conserve a little bit of water. I have a bucket inside the sink right here. And we're just going to put the tomatoes inside that uh, bucket of water and we're gonna let those sit there for just a few moments here. Okay. Again, it doesn't matter the size of tomatoes, big tomatoes, small tomatoes, yellow tomatoes, red tomatoes. No Roma tomatoes. Not. Roma tomatoes, as you can hear my wife in the background, so that's really nice. Because it's, uh, the Roma tomatoes have too much skin, and it really, uh, they, they just don't taste as well, and so that's really important. And they have a hard time filtering through the pasta, uh, what, what's that again, what's that called? Pasta puree. Pasta puree. So it's, they have a really hard time uh, filtering through here, and it gets all clogged up very too soon, okay? All right, so while some of my tomatoes are um, getting washed in the water, I'm going to cut this onion right here. So we've got an onion. We're going to cut off both ends of the onion like this. And we're going to cut it in half. Okay, and then we're going to take off all the papery portions of the onion because we don't want that inside of our pasta sauce. So you might have to take a single layer off if you need to, okay? But we're gonna peel off this uh, onion skin. Okay, and then we're gonna do the same thing to the other half here. We're gonna retain as much of the onion as possible, but yet getting rid of this papery skin part. Um, that just doesn't taste as well. Alright, so uh, we're going to get rid of all this here. And we're going to bring our pot close by, just like this here. So we're going to bring our pot close by and then um, so that we can add all the ingredients to the pot here. So we're going to take our onion here, we've cut it in half, then we're going to um, slice it like thus, and then just get small chunks of the onion, and then slice those up like there, like that. We're going to take this, and then throw it in the pot. And we're going to do the same over here, like this. And uh, if you're uh, trying to not cry while doing this, which of course I'm going to start crying here pretty soon, if you want to try not crying, then what you could do is wear a pair of goggles, and then it will prevent the um, onion vapors that make you cry um, from going to your eyes. So I don't happen to have goggles with me here today, but uh, that could be one of the possibilities that you could try. Otherwise, you just have to cry it out, and it's okay. So, this is not generally a sad affair, but under the circumstances, certainly. Again, you're trying to take off all the papery portions of the skin of the onion. very potent onion. Alright, here we go. Almost all off. 
put this off to the side, get rid of the um, onion peels here. Very important that you don't touch your eyes when, of course, uh, cutting onions. That would never be a good thing. Again, of course, you're gonna, just going to chop these onions up into small pieces here like this. And then just toss that into the pot. Okay? And we're going to keep on doing that here with this one right here. Uh, cut it up into small pieces. Just like this. All right, excellent. All right. Now what we're going to do is we are going to uh, rinse off these tomatoes. They've been sitting in the water here. So um, we're going to take these rinsed tomatoes. And now what we're going to do is we're going to take these and slice them in half and uh, just cut them up into chunks. The, the pieces uh, don't really matter as far as the size of them. Um, or the shape of them, okay? So it doesn't really matter, the size or the shape. Um, in fact, you don't even have, you take off the stem, but you don't have to take off any more of the tomato than just the stem. So you're just slicing these in random fashion here. Yeah, just like that. Okay, and then we're gonna throw this right, or you know, gently place it into the pot. Okay, and you're going to throw in the uh, toss in everything in here, the tomato, the uh, seeds, everything. If there's a little bit of a stem from the tomato, you're going to pull that stem off and then throw that away. Keep on doing this to all these tomatoes here. So um, we're going to keep on cutting up tomatoes. Uh, again, beautiful tomatoes. The most important thing is to have organic tomatoes, vine ripened. It's critical. Um, without the proper ingredients, you cannot have a good pasta sauce, no matter how great the recipe is. So uh, the first thing is, is you actually need great tomatoes, organic from your local farmer's market. So a little promotion there. Again, we're going to throw in the tomato pieces into the pot here. tomatoes. We're just going to keep on piling tomatoes into this pot here. All right. I'm going to show you what's inside my pot so far so you get kind of an idea of what this all looks like. you can see what's inside there. I've just got uh, tomatoes, chopped up onions, nothing else so far. All right, here we go. We're going to keep on going. Uh, like I did uh, last time, I showed you the pot of tomatoes thus far. This is not nearly enough, so we're not quite done at all. So what we're going to do next here before we carry on is we are going to um, add some sugar and salt and olive oil. Okay, and uh, so I'm going to get the amount of sugar that we need, and uh, it's effectively just a small palm full of sugar, and we're going to place that in there, all in the tomatoes. And then the next part that we need is some of that salt that I had mentioned, and it's about three times the salt as there is sugar. Bam, just like that. And then we're going to add a generous amount of olive oil to this. And here we go. The generous oh. amount of olive oil. Yeah. Here we go. Finger, 
Yeah, yes, yes. Okay, perfect. That's the perfect amount of olive oil. All right, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna keep on, uh, I have my washed tomatoes right up here in the front, and we're just gonna keep on slicing these tomatoes um, and then adding them to the pot. So uh, one of the key things here in slicing up these tomatoes is that you just wanna have uh, uh, uneven sections of these tomatoes. Uh, random, random cuts, it doesn't really matter what they are. Um, the other thing that you don't want to do is you don't want to smash the tomatoes into the pot. But we are gonna have a completely filled pot of tomatoes. Okay, you don't wanna bruise the tomatoes by smashing them into the pot. So here we go, we're gonna keep on adding tomatoes. Keep on chopping them up, small, irregularly shaped tomato slices. So thus far, I hope you're enjoying this video, okay? There's really not any chemistry behind this here at this moment in time, because this is just a cooking video, and not that there isn't lots of chemistry in cooking, okay? Uh, it's one of the reasons why I love cooking. My wife and I love cooking together. And uh, there is truly lots of chemistry in cooking. And once you get to uh, cooking quite a bit, eventually you don't add the exact amounts on what are on recipes. And you just kind of work with it as you go. And that's what this sauce is all about. It's not exact amounts, nothing exact. It's just kind of a feel for how many tomatoes, how much salt, how much sugar, and it's something that you can modify and adjust. Just like um, with chemistry problems, uh, you want to be able to learn how to do them, and then you can apply those skills to new chemistry problems based on your own taste. And that's what we do here with these uh, tomatoes. If you have a little bad part of the tomato, you're just going to toss that, throw that away, get rid of that. Don't add that to the tomato sauce, of course, right? Um, but again, one of the reasons that, that we are picking these tomatoes is that they are organic and uh, they taste, and they're vine ripened, and that's why they are ready to go. And they will taste so much better. Your sauce is going to be very dependent upon uh, the ingredients in which you add to it. So you notice that when I'm cutting these up, uh, I slide off what's on the cutting board, so that way I get the liquid that is in the tomato as well as the seeds, the skin, the whole thing goes on there. I'm also not cutting out where the stem used to be. Um, we're just going to add it in there. Um, at, at first, I thought that we should be removing that, but it really doesn't make any difference. Okay. And let me show you kind of where we're at thus far. Okay. And then notice that I'm kind of turning the pot back and forth, and it allows the tomatoes to kind of settle in to all the nooks and crannies and fill it all up. So this is what I have so far, looking really good, okay? Still not quite there, still need to add some more tomatoes. sharp knife, that way, uh, otherwise you end up smashing the tomato as opposed to cutting the tomato. So you certainly want to be cutting the tomato, not smashing it, and that really also helps out in not bruising the tomato as well. Okay. And I love this pasta sauce on just about anything. Obviously, of course, pasta. Um, uh, one of my favorite pastas is tagliatelle, um, but 
this works with any pasta. Uh, the other way that you can have this pasta sauce is on gnocchi, which um, is, is fantastic on gnocchi as well. Uh, another way that you can have this pasta sauce is to put, uh, cook some rice. And this is a, an, an excellent meal here. Um, have some white rice that you cook, and then fry an egg, and uh, place the egg on top of, uh, sorry, have a pile of rice, that white rice that you've cooked, then uh, place some of the tomato sauce right on top of the rice, um, again, however much tomato sauce you want, and then on top of that, place a nice fried egg, and there you go, you got a great meal right there. It's actually really delicious. And um, I don't know if you know of anyone, but when I was a kid, I had one of my, uh, my friends, when I was growing up, he liked to have his scrambled eggs with ketchup. And I thought, what a weird thing that was. But after having tomato sauce with a fried egg on top of rice, you understand that it's actually really quite delicious. All right, so we're uh, mixing that up there a little bit. We're almost up at the top here, so we're gonna try to uh, just uh, even this out. We're pretty close to the rim. I think we could fit a few more tomatoes in there. I always wanna fit in as many as possible. This is a very lengthy process as far as the cooking portion of it, okay? And you want to reduce down all the uh, liquid of the tomatoes. Uh, so that's why you need to boil this for quite some time. Again, you notice that I did not include an exact amount of salt, sugar, or oil. It's, that's why we're cooking, right? As chefs normally do, they don't add exact amounts, they don't really measure things too well. It's a pinch of this and a pinch of that, and a toss of this and a toss of that. And we're doing the same thing here today with our tomato sauce. Okay. So we're almost just about done here. We've got a few more that we can add into these little spots right here. Show you what we've got here and we've got uh, a whole giant pot full of tomatoes chopped up tomatoes various different shapes and sizes okay as far as our cuts now what we're going to do is we're going to place this on the stove over here okay and we're going to set this to a medium high temperature to begin with and to start this uh, boiling. And once it starts boiling, then we're gonna reduce the flame and then continue heating this for a number of hours, actually. No, ya ha pasado. Ya ha pasado. Eh, en una hora que lo mire. Maybe an hour, hour and a half. You're gonna check it. You're gonna Yo check it. Okay. Um, so I'm gonna turn on the fan. We got the fire burning, we got the tomatoes on there, we've got the olive oil, the salt, the sugar. We do have some leftover tomatoes, and then you may ask, what am I gonna do with all these leftover tomatoes? Well, I think we're gonna have to have a sandwich with our leftover tomatoes. So that's what we're gonna have for the rest of the week. This is all that's left of that box of tomatoes. So I've set aside some of the larger tomatoes and so that we can use these for um, uh, uh, either salads or sandwiches. So, um, another great recipe um, is sliced up tomatoes with uh, tuna and olive oil and olives with a little bit of salt and pepper, that same salt actually. And that's fantastic on uh, little slices of bread or crackers, whatever you like. 
But anyways, what we're going to do, I'm going to pause the video here in just a moment. Um, we're going to come back to it in a little bit, but I'm going to let that heat up and boil for a little bit. And we're going to take a look at what that looks like a little bit later on. Until then, we're going to, uh, if you're liking what you're seeing, give me a thumbs up on this video. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel. That is The Crazy Hat Chemist. And um, The Crazy Hat Chemist. So please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Give me a thumbs up on this video and watch my other chemistry videos. I got some great chemistry videos in honors chemistry and advanced placement chemistry. And we're going to, uh, there's also some demonstrations in there as well. So check out the demonstrations, check out the instructional videos, they're really good. So, um, don't go away, we're going to be watching the rest of this video in just a second. I'll see you in a bit. Well, welcome back. Here we go again. We're going to finish up this uh, pasta sauce here, the world famous pasta sauce. And so, what has happened is that we have taken the tomatoes and heated them up for approximately three hours. So what we've done is evaporated off, what we've done is evaporated off um, much of the liquid, but still much of the liquid remains. So this is what this looks like here. Hopefully you can see that. Um, and now the next step is to take our hand blender. You need a hand blender just like this. We're gonna mix this up. So we're gonna grind everything up. We got the uh, tomatoes, um, inside there and we need to grind this up. So this is one of the critical steps here in this whole process and you got to make sure that uh, you don't lift this hand mixer out of the tomatoes and then you're going to have a mess in the kitchen. So you certainly don't want that. Okay, so here we go. We're going to drop this right inside here and start mixing. And start blending this up and uh, uh, it's going to tear it up all into little tiny pieces essentially. Okay, here we go. I'm going to give you an idea of what this looks like so far, just so that you can take a look at this. All right. Hopefully that's looking good to you. I'm not sure if it's looking good, but it tastes delicious. I'll say that. So what we're going to do is we're going to finish this up, blend this up entirely, and then um, I'll show you the ending product here. So, All right. So here we go. Now we have finished the blending process completely. And so I'm going to... Uh, have you take a look at this here and see what this looks like. Hopefully you can see that. Oh, that looks delicious. Okay, so now what we need to do, this next step here is that we're going to um, scoop this out of here and pass it through this passa puree. And that's what this uh, mechanical device here is. I'll have you take a look at this. You could probably get this anything online, but um, certainly you can get them in Spain. And so essentially what we're gonna do is we're gonna be placing the tomatoes uh, the tomato sauce that has been ground up right in here and then we're going to be turning this device and what that does is that um, forces the tomatoes the tomato sauce to go through these holes in the bottom here and then it will hold back the seeds and the skin of the tomato um, and so then you'll have this really nice creamy uh, pasta sauce so let's give that a try and see how that happens here. So we're going to have this right here um, in a bowl so that we can um, collect the uh, underneath side here, which is just the tomato sauce that we want. So we're going to be scooping this out here into here, just like this, with a nice spoon. That's all you need. Okay. And you're going to fill this up about, you know, halfway full or something like that. And it's a very simple process here. You're just gonna place this right here like this and then turn the crank and uh, you can see the tomato sauce coming right on through there, okay? It's really easy. So I'll give you uh, a close-up view of that here. Just a second if this doesn't fall again. Here we go. 
And so this is what this is going to look like here, just like that. Okay, just like that. You got that? All right. So let's uh, do this for a little bit here. We're going to pass all this through the passapure. It's going to hold back the seeds and the skin. And I'll show you what that looks like in just a second. But it's a pretty easy process. Uh, it can be a little bit tedious and time consuming, but this device is fantastic. And perfect. That's all I'm going to get out of this one. I do have a little spatula right here so that we can um, actually keep all the sauce that we want. So we're just going to keep that and put that right back in the bowl there. Okay. Perfect. All right. And uh, now uh, I'll have you take a look at this here so you can kind of see what has been held back. So the seeds and the skin have been held back in this pasta puree. And so that's what you don't want in your perfect pasta sauce. So what we want to do is get rid of this here. So we're going to dump this part um, uh, either in the trash or down the sink. It's up to you entirely how you're going to get rid of that. But uh, if you clean this in between, it will certainly make the uh, job much easier. Okay, and then so what we need to do is just uh, have at this for the whole rest of this container here. Okay, and so we're going to pass some more through here, so I'll just let you take a look at that here one more time, so you can see how this certainly, this works. It's a really easy process here. Okay, doesn't take very much work at all, but this is really the last step before consuming, the last step that makes this the most delicious pasta sauce on the planet. All right, fantastic. Done it one more time here. We're just gonna uh, quickly take that spatula, take that off there like that. Perfect. And again, what's been held back is uh, right there inside, hopefully you can see that. And those are the seeds and the skin of the tomatoes and the onions, in fact, as well. We're gonna toss that. And then what we have left here is uh, the perfect pasta sauce. And that's right here. Um, and you can see that right here. It's just absolutely perfect. Um, and of course, it does taste delicious as well. Mm. Delicious. Um, so, the key to this pasta sauce is getting organic vine-ripened tomatoes. And I want to thank Mr. Toledo and Toledo Organic Farming for the best tomatoes on the planet. Um, you have to have organic onions, organic uh, salt as much as possible, and organic sugar. And really, there's not much to it. It's time consuming, but it is the best pasta on the planet. Um, I also want to thank Lauren and Nikki for encouraging me to run this video and set up this video. And the last person I need to think of, think of uh, is my wife, of course. Um, she's the one that this pasta sauce is her recipe. It is her pasta sauce, and she knows how to make the best pasta sauce. I'm just the one showing the, showing the video here. So, there's one more part to this, and that is the consumption. But other than that, I think we've had a great video on how to make the best pasta sauce in the world. And I'll see you in just a moment. Okay, here we are in the very final stage. In fact, the best part about cooking, and that is the eating part. Um, so, just so that you know, that whole entire box of tomatoes enabled me a yield of about five to six of these jars. Now what you do with these is you put them in the freezer and then you save them for the entire rest of the year. But for right now, now's the perfect time to have your pasta sauce on some, of course, pasta, your favorite pasta, and fresh Parmesan cheese right on top. Another way you can have your favorite pasta sauce, of course, is just with a slice of bread and some pasta sauce. A great way as well. And one more and last one and that is some Aborio rice with pasta sauce and a fresh fried egg. 
it doesn't get much better than this. So, I want to thank all of you for watching this video. I want to make sure that you do know that I actually make instructional chemistry videos, and really, that's my thing. So please watch me on YouTube. Give me a thumbs up if you like this recipe. Subscribe to my YouTube channel, and I hope to see you next time. Bye for now.